الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله we've reached the third naqid from the nawaqid al Islam al Ashra by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Hab رحمه الله تعالى in which the Sheikh said من لم يكفر المشركين وشك في كفرهم أو صحها أو صحه مذهبهم كفر. The Sheikh says, رحمه الله تعالى, <coughs> whoever does not consider polytheists to be dis disbelievers, or doubts their disbelief, or authenticates their religion, has disbelieved. This is a very important, uh, very important kaida or principle and naqid from the nawaqid al-Islam for us to have an understanding of because there is a lot of shubahat or doubt with regards to this uh, as new contemporary movements that have evolved in the West especially. But in fact, you'll find the effects of these movements and these new ideologies uh, spread around the world. And so they are spreading. However, most of the Muslim Ummah knows that these principles are false. However, there are those who are active in their da'wah and spreading that religion is just one and that Islam is the same as Kufr and those other uh, beliefs uh, of Christianity, Buddhism, uh, Sikhism, all, all these other uh, religions and, and Judaism that they are under one umbrella and that they all worship Allah so they are not disbelievers. This is one of the concepts that is being spread and you find people uh, spreading this new ideology because it's new because the Ummah in the past from the time of the Salaf up until most of the Ummah uh, most of the history of the Ummah that you did not have this kind of Dalal you did not have this type of misguidance because it was accepted that you were either a Muslim on Islam uh, or you were on disbelief so there was, it was a very clear distinction the Ummah has had, except for those, uh, some extreme uh, Sufi sects that uh, broke down the walls and were uh, of belief in Kufr and mixed them and believed that uh, the deen is one or that there is no disbelief or uh, etc. these types of beliefs but most of the history of Islam it was very clear that this was not an issue that uh, Muslims had to contend with mostly so in regards to this Sheikh Muhyiddin Hafizullah Ta'ala he says what is meant by this he said Al-Kufr Al-Akbar wa Shirk Al-Akbar when a man lam you kafiruhu for who a mukedib lilahi who a kafir mithluhu. Haitha en the laha cud kafira thalika kafir. Wahakama be kufrihi. Wahum ibad zul othan. Well asnam. Wakeda al Yahud wa Nasara. Wa Wathaniun. Wa Dahariun. Wa Budiun. Wa Vadihim. Min sa irul milil. Wa Nahal. Vadil Islam. وقال تعالى ومن يبتغي غير الإسلام دينا فلن يقبل منه وهو في الآخرة من الخاسرين and that's Surah uh, Surah Ali Imran verse 85 so the Sheikh here he said that the major kufr this entails the major kufr and Shirk al-Akbar, associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that when we have people who believe in this, who have beliefs which are pure disbelief, 
without any doubt that the one who does not make takfir of them, the one who believes that they're actually your brothers in iman, your brothers in faith, that they are actually believers in uh, Islam or believers in the correct deen, that the one who has doubt about this or does not or denies this or, or accepts that this uh, disbelief is actually iman, then they are telling a lie uh, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they are denying what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has affirmed because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made takfir of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made takfir in his book as we mentioned in the beginning of the treaties about takfir mutlaq or takfir al-mu'ayyan, takfir mutlaq being the general takfir that for example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna ladina kafiru mina, uh, min ahli kitab wal mushrikeen fi nari jahannam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says verily those who are the pagans uh, and, uh, and from the people of the book and you know and the, and the people of the book are in the hellfire forever so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made takfir the general fact takfir meaning anyone who falls under this category uh, fits this description is uh, is a disbeliever. They are not Muslim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has included the mushrikeen and the Ahl Kitab, meaning the Jews and the Christians. So, therefore, the person who denies this point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made clear takfir that there's no doubt about, then they are denying what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So from this angle, they have disbelieved. They've disbelieved because they've denied. It's as if they're telling a lie. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes takfir of them. And then this person says, no, 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 no. They're not kufar. They're not disbelievers. I, I know Allah said this, but I'm saying this. So this is, in, in from this point, is one of the ways in which they disbelieve with regards to this, this point. And then the shaykh, he mentions, uh, as far as details about who those people are that are clear disbelievers they are the people who uh, worship uh, idols and uh, you know take statues and uh, and so forth who worship uh, these generally non living uh, entities uh, and then he said and likewise the Jews and the Christians <clears throat> and the 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 various types of pagans, whether they be fire worshippers or Buddhist or other than them, from the various uh, religious beliefs that are out there, which are other than Islam. And then he mentioned as evidence for this the verse in which Allah the Almighty says, "And whoever desires other than Islam a religion." then it is not accepted from him and he is in the hereafter one of the losers meaning whoever dies on other than Islam is one of the Khazirin that they will be in that dwell in the hell fire forever that is their ab uh, abode that is their final destination wa'iyadhan billah min dhalika so this is clear evidence that those who uh, disbelieve in Islam rightfully called disbelievers. We cannot say then, therefore, and say that they are believers. It also affirms for us, this is a naqid al-Islam, this is a nullifier of, of Islam, because the one who denies this principle, then they are dis disbelieving. If you fail to make takfir and accept that the fact is that someone who disbelieves in Islam is a disbeliever, then you have uh, the person who, who fails to deny this, they have disbelieved because the evidence are too clear. The evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are wadih jiddin. It would seem that this is a logical conclusion. However, when we look at what's going on in the West, for example, one example I'll give you, there was a group I remember in the 2000s, I don't know how long they've been around, they called themselves the Three Amigos. And one of them uh, is a supposed Muslim. In fact, he's from uh, my 
state, Washington State, perhaps from Seattle. And he goes around, makes lectures with a, a priest and a rabbi. And they call themselves the Three Amigos. They are, and the, the uh, strangest thing about it, and I listened to a program on NPR, uh, a radio uh, show that's popular there, and they were interviewing him and the others, but he was the one who was the most vigilant in defending they were not defending. He said, listen, we're brothers. Uh, and then the radio host was even like, but, you know, are you saying, you know, that, you know, and the radio host is a disbeliever, is, is saying, hey, you know, but isn't there a distinction between Islam and this and that and the other, and that, you know, and he said, listen, you know, we may have different paths, but we're all going to the same place. Basically saying we're all going to paradise, regardless of what their belief. He has negated Aqidah and Al-Wallah wal bara totally, without doubt, like, the most, almost the most liberal of people who you could consider Muslim still would not accept this, this belief. This is Tajawas, this has gone way extreme outside of the full Islam, just throwing away the most fundamental principles of Islam, that important naqid of Islam that we mentioned. And it's negating the Sharia, it's negating the, uh, the a creed of Islam. And we know that our creed is what uh, enters us into paradise, enters us into the fold of Islam, and your creed can negate your Islam. Wallah Mista'an. The Prophet والسلام, said in a Sahih hadith, Waladi nafs, Waladi nafsu Muhammadin biyadi, la yasma'u bi, ahadin min hadhil ummati Yahudi, wala nasrani. ثُمَّ يَمُوتُ وَلَمْ يُؤْمِنْ بِالَّذِي أَرْسَلْتُ بِهِ إِلَّا كَانَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ النَّارِ The Prophet والسلام, said in, in a hadith in Sahih Muslim, a hadith of Abi Huraira, رضي الله تعالى He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by the one whose, whose, whose hand my soul is in, no one hears of me from the nation of the Jews and the Christians and then dies and fails to believe in in what I was sent with except that they will be in the uh, they will be companions of the hellfire which is very clear which means that someone if they are a Jew or a Christian they are not ordered to follow the the earlier uh, the Injil and the Torah, you know, what we consider the the original biblical text and the, uh, the, the, the Torah. But that has been nullified and distorted. Those texts have been distorted and nullified and meaning that the Jews and the Christians of today all are disbelievers. They all disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they disbelieve in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they disbelieve in Islam. And with that being the case, that if one from those nations hears the message of Islam and does not believe in it, accept in it, then they still they die they die of disbelief as a disbeliever. That's clear. However, those contemporary uh, groups and individuals, for example, now there are homosexual masjids. Homosexuality is a major sin in Islam. With that being said, a, a Muslim who does these major sins is still a Muslim, as long as they do not believe that those sins are lawful. But now we have so-called Imams in America, one Somali individual, I think in California, another African-American individual, uh, not that that's important, their race, but just uh, clarifying that. We have also other individuals around the world in South Africa. You have some gay imams. These are open homosexual imams that legitimize the practice. They have clearly disbelief because they've went against the Quran, the Sunnah, and the Ijma of the Muslims. But my point being is now you have whole movements that have this secular or so liberal in their mentality, in their ideology that they are trying to distort and make Islam fit into their liberal ideology 
instead of them fitting into what Islam has come with. And with that, they have disbelieved. And those who follow that methodology, that ideology, have disbelieved. So when two sisters or two supposed Muslim women say they want to marry, or two men say they want to marry, and they believe that what they're doing is okay in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they have disbelieved because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly uh, said that this is a, a wicked sinful practice and the people of Lut were destroyed for this. It wasn't about sodomy only, but they were destroyed because the men desired other men and they wanted the visitors meaning who were angels to be who were in, as handsome men they wanted them the guest of loot to come out and join their fiasco of uh, of uh, sexuality Allah. so this shows us that this is um, these are uh, wicked practice, but it shows you the mindset of those people who are so liberalized that they have tried to destroy uh, basic Islamic principles. Getting back to the core issue, this nullifier of Islam uh, comprises of three main issues. Firstly, that it is an obligation <clears throat> that it is an obligation to uh, make takfir of the one who disbelieves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his religion. Uh, firstly, that is the obligation to declare whoever Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have declared to be non-Muslim a disbeliever. Idol worshippers, pagans from the Jews and Christians and whoever does not believe in the messengers sent by Allah or some of them. From the evidence that shows they are disbelievers is a saying of Allah the Almighty those who said that Allah was the Messiah, the son of Maryam, have disbelieved. Uh, Allah the Almighty says in another verse, those who disbelieved from the children of Israel were cursed by the tongues of Dawood or David and Isa, the son of Maryam, because they used to be disobedient and transgress. This is in uh, Surah, uh, Surah um, Al-Ma'idah, verse 78. So whoever does not consider them to be disbelievers has denied the Qur'an, and whoever denies the Qur'an has disbelieved. Then it is an obligation to believe they are disbelievers according to Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Judgment upon them, uh, Allah and His Messengers, judgment upon them, and it is sufficient enough to declare them to be disbelievers due to their denial of the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was mentioned in the uh, Torah and the Bible, the Injil. The second issue related to this uh, nullifier of, uh, of, uh, of Islam is the danger of doubting the disbelief of those who Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have declared to be disbelievers or the scholars of Islam have consensus as to their disbelief. Meaning, that which we have a text, meaning the Quran or the Sunnah, which shows that they're disbelievers. For example, Ahli Kitab, or pagans. It's clear from the Quran and the Sunnah that they're disbelievers. Or that the scholars have consensus on, that they have for example, the scholars in different uh, periods of time, they had ijma about certain beliefs, certain ideologies that arrived, or certain sects that arose uh, that they made takfir of them. That means all the ulama of Ahl Sunnah had consensus that whoever believes such and such is a disbeliever. Whoever is a jahmi is a disbeliever. Whoever is... Um, uh, uh, whoever believes the Quran was created is a disbeliever. Such uh, things like this. This, these are um, principles, or these are a uh, general takfir, according to people who hold that belief. Meaning that the scholars united were unanimous in declaring whoever holds such and such belief to be a disbeliever. So this is uh, what what we're describing here. Uh, likewise, 
those who commit shirk with Allah by worshipping the graves or tombs. They are also considered disbelievers along with the one who denies their disbelief. This is because they have broken a condition of the testimony of faith and that is certainty or yaqeen. Primarily, this is due to the fact that the person who doubts whether the aforementioned groups are disbelievers does not possess certainty in the concept of Tawheed. In addition, it is important to note that declaring a person to be a non-Muslim is from Allah's rights in accordance with his book and the Prophet wasallam sunnah and the consensus of the pious predecessors. So if a scholar passes a ruling upon an individual declaring him to be a disbeliever for leaving the prayer because it is an issue that the scholars disagree upon, uh, about make a take fear of of the one who who leaves the prayer, uh, leaves the prayer out of laziness or what have you, then it is not permissible to declare the one who disagrees with that ruling a disbeliever or to deem they have doubtfulness in Tawheed because it is an issue of great disagreement amongst the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah. This is a very important principle. That means that even uh, uh, say if a particular scholar makes takfir on. Uh, a specific individual or even some scholars from Ahl Sunnah they say so and so is a disbeliever and I'll give you a real example a real life example was the case of Saddam Hussein <clears throat> that when he was and also Qaddafi that uh, Sheikh bin Baz uh, in his time he made takfir of them Sheikh Muqba also made takfir of uh, definitely of of, of uh, Qaddafi uh, and Saddam Hussein. Likewise, other ulama uh, did the same. Scholars of Ahlul Sunnah. How and and they gave their proofs. They gave their evidences from uh, the Quran and the Sunnah of why these individuals, because they had, uh, you know, Baathist beliefs, uh, especially uh, Saddam Hussein had certain uh, creed and so forth, and Qaddafi had his book, the Green Book, which he uh, said that the Quran. Uh, that the uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for example Qul huwallahu ahad that you should take out the Qul that you should take this out uh, of the Quran so these are these were open disbelief however if another scholar for some reason believed that they had ta'wil for some other reason that prohibits making takfir and didn't refrain from making takfir and said no I think he's a wicked sinner I think he's like this and this and this but he is not a disbeliever outside of the fold of Islam that means that they have disagreements over this. This issue then, it would not be permissible for us to then go and say, oh, we side with Bin Baz, even if we, we did, even if we do, and we make takfir of that other scholar just because they did not make takfir of Qaddafi or uh, uh, Saddam. And I hope this is clear. This means that the, as some of the scholars uh, mentioned, that these, this principle is pertinent to, uh, there, there's a statement, Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah says, Men lam yu kafir, uh, a kafir, uh, fuhu kafir. Whoever does not make takfir of a disbeliever, then he is a disbeliever. Meaning, whoever doubts, and that's what this whole principle, this whole nullifier of Islam that we're talking about relates to. So that if, uh, and, and, so this is pertinent or this is most relevant to the original disbeliever meaning those who are clear uh, in the Quran and Sunnah not where there's contention about whether someone's a disbeliever or not and I hope that that issue is clear because this is where Ahl Sunnah disagrees and uh, with the people of Takfir with a lot of those extremist sects uh, like ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab and, and many others before them, Jamaat Takfir, Wahidra, all of these extremists, that they uh, use this same principle that Ahl Sunnah uses from Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah uh, in, in, in most of in its origin, and they distort this principle to mean whoever does not make takfir of who they make takfir of. So, for example, if they make takfir, وَعِيَاذٍ billah, some of them, many of those takfiris make takfir of our scholars. They make takfir of bin Baz, bin Uthaymin, and others. Or they make takfir of the Muslim governments, and so forth. So, if you don't make, if you have an argument with one of those guys, 
they will make tech fear of you most more than likely this has been the case in our experience and what we've read from them and listened to their statements and our debates with them over the many years that they will make tech fear of you because they say you're not making tech fear of the governments they'll say no there are no Muslim governments there's no Muslim leaders this is their belief and this is the law of Mubin this is clear misguidance and disbelief likewise they will make tech fear of the scholars of Ahl Sunnah because they don't support their extremist ideology and if you support those scholars then therefore then they say then you are therefore a disbeliever وَعِيَاذٌ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ the law. Uh, the third issue relating to this uh, nullifier is the issue uh, relates to this nullifier faith is to believe or affirm the religion or way of life of disbelievers. This constitutes an even more serious form of disbelief. For example, if a person says the religion of the Jews or Christians is also correct, or they are also going to paradise, and the only difference between us is our deeds, or they are believers just like Muslims, or Buddhists follow the correct path as well, all of these uh, various statements constitute disbelief and amount to the rejection of the Quran, uh, as Allah says, and whoever desires a religion other than Islam will not have it accepted, and in the hereafter they will be of one of the Qasidin, one of the losers. And we've already mentioned this ayah and these uh, details. All the previous religions were nullified by the Quran and the message of Islam, and the Prophet ﷺ was the seal of the Prophet ﷺ. Allah Taala says, So because of their breach of their covenant, we cursed them and made their breasts grow hard. They changed the words from their right places and have abandoned a good part of the message that was sent to them. And this is in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 13. This verse refers to the Jews and Christians who received the message of Islam from Allah but broke their covenant with Allah and changed the words from the revealed books like the Torah and the Bible choosing instead to follow their desires and forsaking Allah's commands. Uh, Sheikh Saleh, uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Abdulaziz Al-Raji explains that the one who refuses to declare a non-Muslim a disbeliever has contradicted the very essence of Tawheed which consists of two main pillars belief in Allah and disbelief in anything that is worship besides Allah, meaning Taghut. Allah says, whoever disbelieves in Taghut and believes in Allah, then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that will never break. And this is in Surah, uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 256. The one who rejects this principle has rejected the meaning of the testimony of faith which is comprised of negation, there is no God worthy of worship, and affirmation, except Allah, meaning affirming that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. By negating the worship of false gods, one is disbelieving in Tawagheed, and at the same time affirming that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah the Almighty. So, this... Uh, speech, uh, this, these uh, uh, no, notes or explanation by Sheikh Abdulaziz Al-Raji, Hafizullah Ta'ala, uh, give us uh, great insight into this principle and that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has commanded us to worship Him and Him alone and to disbelieve in those worship besides Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So we cannot try to, in order for the sake of harmony and the sake of supposed tolerance that we can accept disbelief as belief and say no they are our brothers in faith and they are going to paradise no these are a matter of itiqad this is a matter of uh, iman of, of of your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is essential that the Muslim believes in Tawheed and negates shirk and negates the beliefs and should not have any doubt about the disbelief of the people of shirk. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.